Good morning. Welcome to our Sunday School lesson. We sure do appreciate having you with us each and every Sunday. Uh, we thank you for tuning in today. Today's lesson is March the 19th of 2023. Uh, as I usually have to say, this is our online Sunday School lesson from Asabel Baptist Church. I'm Johnny Smith. I'll be doing the teaching again today. Uh, again, thank you for joining us. The title of this week's lesson is, I Will Come Again. The teacher's book explains this week's lesson this way. It said, Jesus is calling people that will honor God throughout all of eternity. I love the opening, uh, as I shared with you before. This comes from our commentary this quarter, uh, which uh, to me has been a blessing uh, this quarter because it's the same gentleman that wrote last week a uh, last quarter's commentary but he has such real stories uh, as being a retired minister and a retired professor at the New Orleans seminary uh, but in today's lesson which we're going to study it's come from John chapter 13 and John chapter 14 in the 13 and 14 we're going to study a passage that Jesus used uh, on the last night. Uh, to comfort his disciples uh, as he explained and as his disciples learned about his impending departure. In this passage, he tells his disciples where he is going. He said, I'm going to prepare a place for you uh, where his disciples, and yes, even those of us today who worship Christ and are called Christians, can go and be with him and be with him for eternity. These words have been used, I know, for a couple thousand years since Jesus said them, uh, but I can remember the words used many times at the, the funeral services of loved ones. But he starts out this week talking about, I go to prepare you a mansion. Ira Stamp Hill, born on, on February 14, 1914, wrote more than 550 gospel songs, southern gospel songs, uh, during his lifetime. By the time he was 10, he could play the piano, the organ, the ukulele, and the accordion, as I studied this week. He sang in revival crusades across the United States, and the commentary said, and in 40 countries. In 1949, at a revival in a small church, the pastor suggested to him to write a song about the mansion God went to prepare for us in heaven. That day, Mansion Over the Hilltop was the name of the song, was written and it was born that day. And that night, Stamp Hill sung it uh, that night for the very first time in that revival. During the revival and they introduced the new song, he told the story of a young girl playing in front of a dilapidated old rundown house. A stranger came by and expressed his concern to the young girl, having to live in such poor surroundings. The young girl smiled and answered that her father had inherited a fortune and was building her a mansion just over the hills. She told him she would not have to live in the old dilapidated house forever. That song, as he wrote, provided comfort for many people since he wrote it in the 40s. But it today, in today's lesson, we learned that a mansion is not the best word picture to describe the place Jesus is going to prepare for us. He will no doubt be preparing us a big house with lots of rooms and it will glisten and be a favor to the eye of our human imagination. We can't imagine how beautiful this place he's prepared for us is going to be. Last week we finished chapter 12 of John's Gospel. Chapter 13 makes a huge break in John's Gospel. So let's start with John chapter 13 and the first three verses. Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come, 
that he should depart from this world to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And supper being ended, the devil having already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going back to God. These first three verses of chapter 13 set the stage for the events that will unfold in Jesus' life. The time was prior to the feast of the Passover. Last week we learned Jesus had proclaimed, indeed, his hour had come. And now it was getting even closer to his hour. Jesus in verse 1 explains that he had, his hour had come means the time was now nigh for his departure. It was time for him to leave his earthly body and return as God's son back to God in heaven. He had spent over three years now with his disciples, now teaching them and leading them, praying with them and loving them as his own brothers and sister. He had done everything with them that he had come to earth to do. And his hour was now. The disciples and Jesus were having supper together, most likely sitting around a very large table talking. Then Jesus makes an announcement. This announcement would start the things in motion that would then end up at his crucifixion. He said, the devil has entered into one of my disciples. And Jesus knew the devil had entered Judas Iscariot's heart. Then John chapter 13, verses 21 through 30. Let's take a look at that. When Jesus had said these things, he was troubled in his spirit and testified and said, most assuredly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Then the disciples looked at one another perplexed about whom he spoke. Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of his disciples, whom Jesus loved. Simon Peter therefore motioned to him to ask who it was of whom he spoke. Then leaning back on Jesus' breast, he said to him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is he to whom I shall give a piece of bread when I have dipped it. And having dipped the bread, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. Now after the piece of bread, Satan entered him. Then Jesus said to him, What you do, do it quickly. But no one at the table knew for what reason he said this to him, being Judas Iscariot. For some thought, because Judas had the money box that Jesus had said to him, Buy those things we need for the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. Having received the piece of bread, he then went out immediately, and it was night. Jesus' voice to the disciples as he then spoke indicated that he was assuredly troubled now. He then says to the group, As we sit here, truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. The disciples were in shock, looking at each other in bewilderment. I couldn't help but think as we sat around our family table from time to time how proud I am of the family that I have. And I wondered, was is one of my children or grandchildren going to betray me one day or are they going to love me to the end? Surely the disciples thought that they would love Jesus always. But now one Jesus announces was going to betray him. Jesus says to the group, it will be one of my disciples to whom I will give a piece of bread. After he dipped the pieces of bread, he had the piece of bread and he handed it to Judas Iscariot and said, what you're going to do, go do it quickly. No one knew what Judas had become. He had been part of their group and traveled with them for three years now, just like another brother. Verse 30 says, When Judas received the bread, 
He left the supper and went out immediately. He left the supper that left 11 disciples in Jesus at the supper. Now, John chapter 13, verses 31 through 35. So when he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man is glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and glorify him immediately. Little children, I shall be with you a little while longer. You will seek me. And as I said to the Jews, where I am going, you cannot come. So now I say to you, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. After Judas left the Passover meal and left the building, Jesus addressed his remaining disciples about his glorification. Remember last week, glorification was his death, crucifixion, resurrection, and also his return to glory. In his glorifications, he would glorify the Father, and the Father would glorify his Son through his death, burial, and resurrection. Jesus tells his disciples, I will be with you only a little while longer, actually just a few hours, then I will be gone. He then challenged the disciples to continue to love one another in the same way that he had shown love for them over the past three years. Remember now, Judas is gone. This love would serve as evidence that they were Jesus' disciples. Let me add, Jesus' true disciples. Through loving one another, Jesus told them, everyone will know that you are my disciples. He didn't have to say a word. He says, everyone will know you by your actions. They were neckening He didn't say everyone would recognize them by how much they knew or what they said about him. But they would know they were Jesus' disciples by how much love they showed for themselves to each other and to the fellow, mate, fellow people. As I thought of that, uh, I thought of an example I thought I would share with you. Have you ever known anyone who says they're a Christian, but yet you'd never know it because their life never shows it? They never show any kind of love to their fellow man. If God the Father is in your heart, Others will know it through your actions. I have a very close friend whom I'm praying for today that's quoted uh, this example this way. He told me of a man who said he was a Christian. When he told him he was a Christian, this man quoted back, I would have never known you were a Christian if you hadn't told me. Are you the kind of Christian that you have to tell somebody that you're a Christian before they would know it? Or do they recognize you as a Christian by the way you act? In our lives, we're to show Jesus working. We're to show Jesus mingling within our hearts. We're showing Jesus in our lives to other people, to our neighbor. Then if we have to, we use words. In verse 33, Jesus tells them, Little children, I will be with you just a little while longer. Then I will go. By calling them little children, he was affectionately telling them, I'm leaving now, but you are old enough now. You've grown up now. You're no longer children. You are on your own. I'm leaving you. Take care of things as if I was here. And then he tells them, Whether I go, you cannot go and come with me. Jesus was telling them he was about to go and ascend to God the Father. The next portion of our lesson today is entitled Honor Through Loyalty. And it comes from John chapter 13 as we finish up chapter 13, verses 36 through 38. Then Simon Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus answered him, 
Where I am going, you cannot follow me now, but you shall follow me afterward. Peter said to him, Lord, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for your sake. Jesus answered him, Will you lay down your life for my sake? Most assuredly, I say to you, the rooster shall not crow till you have denied me three times. Loyalty, standing by one, being dedicated to help one. After Jesus said he was leaving, Peter, usually the one who did the most of the talking when the disciples were around, asked Jesus, where are you going? Jesus told him he was going. He could not follow him. Peter, being the unofficial leader of the disciples, says, Lord, the rest of the disciples might not follow you, but I will follow you even if it means my death. He says, I will lay down my life for you, Lord. Jesus tell Peter, tells Peter what most Christians have heard taught many times. Peter, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. Peter was talking big, but Jesus knew what was about to happen in the coming hours. In actual time, the night was coming for which Jesus would be pointed out by Judas. The Roman soldiers would capture him and take him to different leaders and Pharisees. This night, as the song says, would be so long. At each step during the night when Jesus would need Peter, and as Jesus said, Peter would actually deny him, even deny he even knew Jesus three times before the crow, rooster crowed the first part of the next day. Too often we are exactly like Peter. In our minds we envision ourselves as better disciples than we actually are. Pride causes us to think highly of ourselves. And then like Peter, we fall flat on our faces. The final section of our lesson is a well-known lesson. As I read it, uh, I'm going to share with you but the teacher's book entitled this section of our lesson, Honor Through Believing. Chapter 14, first six verses. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. And receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas then said to him, Lord, we do not where you know where you are going. And how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, I am the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. As I looked at my Bible then and I was reading from, I can see many, many preachers' names that I've written and took a note of when I heard them preach using that scripture. Jesus offers his disciples words of comfort now, just like the preachers do at a funeral. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Jesus tries to explain to his disciples, his faithful followers, what was about to happen. The disciples were so confused, very confused. They understood now that Jesus was about to leave them, but they didn't understand where he was going. Over the last couple of hours, they had dinner. Jesus has watched their feet. Jesus had announced his betrayer. Judas, who left the room now, he was no longer considered a disciple. Jesus said, I'm going to leave you. And Jesus predicted Peter would deny him. They were troubled, so troubled. Jesus then says, let not your hearts be troubled. Let me tell you something. If you believe in God, believe also in me, he says. With my departure, I go to meet my Father, which is in heaven. When I get to my Father's house, there are many rooms. Some scriptures, some definitions, some uh, versions of the Bible say mansions, some say many rooms. But I can tell you, 
It's going to be a glorious place. When I get there, I will also prepare you a place to come and see me again. It's what Jesus tells his disciples. If this were not so, I would have told you. But I indeed must go now to start my mansion and your mansion. As I was visiting a sick friend of mine a few days before he passed, not long ago, I told him I was praying for him. He whispered in my ear as best he could. He couldn't talk very loud, but he just said, I'm just waiting now for Jesus to finish my mansion. A few days later, he got his mansion, and he went to live in that mansion. Because I'm sure the friend I'm talking about got his mansion. He deserved it. He lived his life for Jesus. I know for a fact he's preparing me a mansion. And all others who believe in Jesus, they, they also have a mansion being prepared. But while we're still here, Jesus says we must continue about doing his business. I will continue to try to tell others about Jesus through my life and through my words. 14.3 says another promise. If I go and prepare that mansion for you, I will come back again and take all my followers to where I am going. One day, Jesus is going to look over at God and say, it's time. And God's going to say, yes, it is. Go get my children and bring them home. That might come before I die. It might come after I die. But whether it's after or before I die, I know I have a mansion being prepared for me. I'm going to be able to go to heaven. I'm going to be able to sit down and talk to Jesus, talk to Dad and Mom, and talk about all the things that I've still got questions for. And all of them will be answered. Jesus looks at Peter's and all his disciples and says, Y'all know where I'm going. Peter had asked early, Where are you going? Jesus had told Peter where he was going. He could not come, go at this moment. But Jesus then assured him, You can't go now, but one day you can come because I'm going now to prepare a place for you. Jesus would return to the Father but to get there, he would have to take his earthly body to the cross and die on an earthly cross, a, a, a rugged old cross. He had to let his earthly body die so that he could return back to heaven. Then Doubting Thomas says, Lord, we really don't know where you're going. How shall we know the way? Je Jesus responds in simple form, in a few simple words for Thomas. I've always appreciated Thomas. He liked to keep things straight and to the point. Jesus' response to Thomas was in the form of, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. You follow me, you will go to heaven. You will get a mansion. If you accept me as Savior, I will show you the way to the Father. Jesus assured Thomas, that since he knew him, he knew the way. We'll stop here right now, but let me share a few words about that song. I, I, as I opened with it, I couldn't help but think as I was studying this week, you got to share the words of the song that Ira Stamphill wrote called, I've Got a Mansion Over the Hilltop. I'm satisfied with just a cottage below, a little silver and a little gold. But in that city where the ransom will shine, I want a gold one that's silver lined. For you see, I've got a mansion over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never grow old. And someday yonder we will never more wander, but walk on streets that are purest gold. Don't think me poor, deserted or lonely. I'm not discouraged, I'm heaven bound. I'm but a pilgrim in search of a city. I want a mansion, a heart, and a crown. I've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never grow old. And someday yonder, we will never more wander, but walk on streets that are pure as gold. To that I say, amen and amen. 
As we finish up this week, I ask you to pray for Brother Dwight. Saw him in church last week, shook his hand, but he still needs our prayers. Sister Hilda, I was able to see here. Uh, she seems to be doing better. Sister Donna, I understand is back home. Uh, Brother Johnny is home, still having a lot of back problems. Brother Jack, I understand, is uh, home now, awaiting for his mansion to be finished. Uh, Brother Matthew's back home. We pray for him. Brother Larry, Sister Connie, uh, we're praying for her to get over this, uh, this pandemic disease that all of us seem to be touched. She made it three years without getting it, but she's uh, trying to get over it now. I ask you also to pray for our church, that God would send us godly leaders uh, to lead our church. Pray for our country. Uh, I saw how our, some of our leaders uh, of our country stood before people and made public and made fun of God's name this week. I pray for our leaders of our country that they will come to know the God that they ask to protect our troops. Come to know the God in a pure way with a relationship in their heart, not just saying it with his name in vain. With that, I'll say, I'll see you next week. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the Sunday school lesson this week. We pray the blessings upon it. We know today is our youth day in our church, and uh, the youngsters of our church will be doing our Sunday school classes and everything about our worship service. Lord, protect them. Lord, if they make a mistake, just say, Lord, it's in your will. Lord, forgive us of our sins and help us understand what you have for us in the coming days. Forgive us of our sins. Bless our church. Bless our country. Help us all to look to you for our guidance and our strength each day, Lord, as we give you the blessings. Thank you so much, Lord. Amen and amen.